Hi, I'm Jason Myers, a content manager at Influx Data. And I'm Sam Dillard. I'm a product manager for all things Edge at Influx Data. And today we're going to talk about how to configure Edge replication. Sam, can you, where do we start with this? Yeah, so uh, just really quick, I have done a video on this as a broader concept before, so check that video out if you want a, an overview of the concept. I'll give a quick summary here. Great. Edge data replication is a feature that was built into the open source with the idea that we want to stream in real time data from an open source node, usually at the edge, to a remote bucket in a physically remote instance of InfluxDB. Okay. And I'm emphasizing bucket because it happens at the bucket level. And the reason why that's significant is it allows users to be selective about what data they actually do send to the cloud. Okay. So let's take an example. Sure. Let's say that this InfluxDB open source node is at some factory. We have a high fidelity raw data, data set stored there that okay. local operators can run dashboards off of, do alerts, whatever, right? Same the reason. Um, they have automation built in with Flux, right? To downsample, and we'll talk about that concept, into a smaller bucket that's aggregated. Having that replicated to cloud means that we can actually shrink the data we send over the internet, which reduces costs for businesses and reduces storage in cloud and actually ends up making queries faster in the cloud too. Okay, and in this instance, the remote uh, instance is the cloud one. Yes. Okay, and can we have uh, many buckets replicate to cloud? Like, how does that work? The features expectations here are that all of our users or most of our users are going to have more than one of these instances up. And we want them to be able to have a global consolidated view for people in the back office doing analytics, like headquarters or just, you know, people doing um, queries against cloud data sets. Okay. We want to consolidate all of the factory data in this case into a single place for them to look at. Stands a reason. So I see you've got some code here. Uh, can you maybe walk us through this? Uh, what's going on here? How to, how to actually configure this feature? Yeah, sure. So what you're seeing here is actually the entirety of configuring this whole thing. So it's really easy to do. Nice. Uh, it's beautifully simple. So the, the things to note is that it can be done over the API and via the CLI. The CLI is just a wrapper around the API, so we'll use that as a sort of more readable way to demonstrate. Okay. The first thing you have to do is create a remote connection. All of this happens on the open source node. The remote connection is called a remote, which is a resource we store. Um, it takes these flags. Uh, first is a name. So we want to give it some meaningful identifier. Um, and in, yeah, in our case, it's going to be something like HQ because I want to tell myself and my users that we're replicating data to headquarters, right? That's just, it's, it's a hint. Um, the second thing, and actually the rest of them, are flags that basically identify or give us access to that remote instance. So the first one is I have to identify the org ID. I have to know what it is. Um, I have to address it correctly by URL, and then I have to give it a token that has access and authorization okay. to actually write data, which is what replications do. All three of these things I can retrieve just by looking in the UI or, or, or an API call either way. So they're, they're there for you. Okay. Um, a key thing is once you run this, you'll get back a, you know, a, a success re return record that says, here's your remote, and it'll come with an ID. So mm -hmm. you'll have a unique identifier for the remote. Yep. You'll need that for every subsequent replication that you create. Okay. Um, the good news is you only have to create the remote once. So you can create replications against that ID as, as many times as you want. Yeah. Nice. So the second step is creating your first replication. You do the same, same shape command here, name it. In this case, I'm naming it factory because I'm denoting that the data is coming from a factory. Sure. Pretty simple. Um, I'm giving it a remote ID, which is what I got here. That's just to associate the replication to the remote, to the connection. Local bucket is, I'm telling it which bucket locally I want to have replicated, which is factory yeah. downsampled yeah. right yeah. there. Guy right there, yeah. Exactly. Remote bucket is just the bucket that I want to target. Right, okay. so this is you know, obviously singular. This one is named factories because I'm expecting that many factories are going to report data to it. Cool. And wh when does when does this start? This process? Yeah, good question. So once I've created the replication, any data that's written to it will instantly be be replicated. So it's 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 right away. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so once I've got a replication created, what options do I have to manage those? Replications? Yeah. So like with any resource in InfluxDB. Um, we have the create, list, update, and delete commands. Um, so same with remote and replications. When I've created these resources, I can list them, 
right, which gives me a list of them, obviously, but then also a bunch of metadata fields that can tell me about them. So sure. uh, if I want to retrieve my remote ID for a new replication, I can list my remotes. I can update them if, if I have an API token change in cloud or something like that. Um, I can replace that. If I change a bucket name, for instance, in a replication, not recommended usually, but we have right. users that do it, and for good reasons sometimes. Um, if that happens, you can update that, and then we can just do deletes for cleanup. Oh, well, that yeah. sounds like it's a really simple, straightforward way to do some really, really powerful stuff. Yeah. So that's really, really cool. Well, I hope that was useful for you. Uh, for more information about this feature, check out our docs. And until then, we can't wait to see what you build. <laughs>